more on healing, personal growth. So anyone want to tell me what is love means to you? For me, God is love and okay. it's about uh, John 3.16. For God still so loved the world mm -hmm. all the time. Okay. So so okay, so in that definition we can say that love it means Sacrifice. You're giving everything to the person that you love. Huh, how toxic. <laughs> no, but seriously, right? How toxic. Self Love Cupid aims is to improve their mental well-being. We will organize workshops based on our friends' struggles and also our own struggles and we want to help ourselves and we want to help our friends. As a domestic worker, I need to take good care of myself physically. There are so many mental well-being related activities, workshops and everywhere else available for the local. And also in terms of mental health care, it's not accessible for us because a lot of clinic they only open during our work days, um, the language barrier for examples and even the information that are available online, mainly on English or Chinese. So it's quite difficult and I think it is important for us to have this, you know, so we can share the information in our own language. I'm any boss and this is why you so listen to me. Thanks for joining us in the studio, Annie. Can you tell us about yourself and what exactly is Self Love Cupid? Self Love Cupid is, uh, let's just call it as a community based organization. Um, my intentions when I first start Self Love Cupid in 2020, it was, it was very simple. I found something that helped me and I want to share this with my friend and as simple as that. Um, but then I just keep following the flow and, uh, and it becomes of what it is now. Um, I never even intend to be like an activist. I kind of like just fell into it. Um, so during my recovery from my depressions, uh, I come across um, this topic on loving oneself and taking care of oneself, which it was, uh, it, it hit home to me because I spent my entire adult life taking care of other people, my parents, my younger brothers, and all of my employers and my employer's family. And it never came across to me that, ah, oh, I should take care of myself too. And I, yes, of course, I still take care, but it's like a very, like, bare minimum, you, when you're hungry, you eat, when you're thirsty, you drink, and when you're tired, you sleep. But that's it, like, I never really think about how to properly care of myself. And when I dive deeper into the concept, when I read more book, and I start to understand that I was wrong because I put everybody else first, but I never really think about my own well-being. And when I start, um, kind of switch my priority, it helped me to, let's just say, bounce back from my depression's phase into a better. And I think because in self-love it's a very important for us to accept ourselves as, as it is. And it's also to make peace with our life situations that also including our work situations and such. It also um, teach us how to forgive yourself and forgive other people around you. So Self Love Cupid is a app, a website? Uh, well, now it has become a, a community. It's almost like NGO, but we are not registered. Um, so what we are doing now, most of the time nowadays, is that we will organize workshop. And uh, it's based on our friends struggles and also our own struggles and we kind of start thinking what kind of workshop they can help us. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty much like a, like a full-fledged NGO. We just, we want to help ourselves and want to help our friends. Let's do a practice. Now you can stand up and find a partner. Look at your partner eyes. Look them into their eyes deeply into their eyes and say that word 
parents with a compassion, something that you want to hear from your parents. Oh, I feel emotional because I remember my mom never said thank you to me. Thank you. When I joined with the Self Love Coffee, I learned how to respect another people, how to be kind to them, how to be made, uh, nice to myself. Two, three. I love you. Nine, I love you two. too. Freestyle. Do you have any success stories where you've been able to, like, you know, somewhat to have people come forward and be more honest about their need for mental wellness? and that they need help with their mental health. Yes, definitely. I have many stories of that. One, one of the examples is um, the girls that came to us to celebrate her divorce. That is also one thing because in my cultures, if a woman divorces her husband, is still con considered as bad woman or a failed woman. And to see someone who celebrates her divorce from an abusive partner, that is a very brave thing to do. And I think we also have people who after join our monthly peer support group, they start to open uh, to um, seek help, yeah, to have a counseling sessions. Um, but the problem that we had is we, it sometimes is the language, the language um, barrier. So it's hard to find counselor here that can speak Bahasa. And the issue is that a lot of Indonesians, they don't speak English that well. And even they do speak Cantonese, it's mostly it's just like um, basic conversational that it's, uh, you do with your employer and such. So sometimes we will have a team member who go into the counseling room to help with the translations. And other solution is that Sometimes we will going to um, connect them with psychologists in Indonesia, so they can do online counseling through Zoom or WhatsApp call. And actually, the latter options was more affordable compared to the options in Hong Kong. This year is actually the 14 years of um, me working in Hong Kong and um, 12 years with the same employer. You know, with open communications, you all always have a discussions and um, they uh, give me a freedom to actually pursue my own personal growth. That's why I can be here talking to you in a such a corporate setting. I had a community member who experienced a panic attack at the MTR stations um, and the MTR staff had to call the ambulance, but she refused to go to hospital because I need to go back to my work. Yes, my employer need me. And please don't call my employer and don't tell them what happened to me. A lot of these um, personal burdens, they don't, they don't tell their employer because they are afraid of judgment, um, retaliations. And they're afraid that the employer may be thinking that, oh, it's going to affect their, affect their job and their productivity, and they might get fired. And we, in community like Cell of Cupid, we have mental health workshops, we have meditations, we have a peer support group. But most of the time, they don't practice it at home because they don't have the space, they don't have the time to do that. And I think to stay in someone else's home it put us in a very awkward situations. Like, can we do this or can we do that? Like, without our um, employer permission, sometimes. And I think it will be nice for you to encourage them to, to tell them that it is okay for you to also take care of yourself. Otherwise, you will um, experience burnout and it will affect on your family. Why is it important for employers to look out for their own helpers' and mental health? And what should they be looking for if they want to help? I think people need to realize that just like physical health, mental health will also affect our job and our daily life. So if you don't, if you don't help to take care of your um, health or well-being, it will eventually affect your family well-being too. 
let's just say I work for you and I'm um, suffering from depressions and I'm, I'm taking care of your kids and I wasn't able to control my mood, I wasn't to able to control my uh, emotions, there will be time when I'm probably going to snap and it might cause harm to your kids. Can you imagine like to say one of the depression symptoms is brain fog and let's just say I'm supposed to pick up your kids but because of the brain fog that I'm suffering I forgot about it. That is a dangerous. Thanks for coming Annie and thanks for all your help within the community. My pleasure. Oh, you need oh. help? <laughs> 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 I'm proud of you.